welcome to the Grand Land video blog for books that came out on April 29th, 2009. This is actually our free comic book day special. We're going to talk about all the free comic book day books that are going to be available to you this weekend at your local comic store May 2nd. First up, you definitely want to check out Bendis and Jim Chung's The Avengers. It's a really solid Avengers story. It features the new Avengers and it features the Dark Avengers. Uh, and of course, they're both Bendis books, so obviously he's going to focus on those. He's not going to focus on the Mighty Avengers. But it's an excellent story with Thor and a frost giant. And it, it fits into the current continuity, but at the same time, it's a great single issue. It pays off very well. It's told through the eyes of Spider-Man, so obviously it becomes very engaging and very simple. Um, I'm not quite sold on Marvel's new smaller print size. This is very awkward. I, I feel kind of petite holding it, so I don't know. Um, next up, Marvel also offers Wolverine Origin of an X-Man. We have to offer a Wolverine book because Wolverine opens today at the movie theaters. But really, this is a kid's book. It's cute at the end, it, the way that it uh, ties into a very important moment in Wolverine history. But before that, it's just very cartoony rendered. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel like what I would want from a Wolverine story. But... Again, if it's for the kids, it pays off for the kids, that's for sure. And you can see a lot of kids' advertisements through it. Um, it's all right. It's passable. But, again, not something that I really enjoyed as much as I enjoyed the Bendis and Chung Avengers, which is actually Marvel's definitely their best offering for the free comic book day. Um, DC is going to offer Blackest Night number zero. And, yes, you do have to read this. This is very good. Uh, as much as I've been slamming Jeff Johns for his Green Lantern work lately, this is excellent. And it does set up an excellent primer for Blackest Night and talk about all the different lanterns along the way, all the different colors that are going on. Um, really good stuff, especially for a zero issue and for a free issue. Exploring kind of the mentality going into Blackest Night. And then, like I said at the back, you know, a couple of uh, pages of primer of what, who the different rings belong to and how they tie in and what's going on with them and what we will see in the future. Also by DC, the kids mega sampler, Teen Titans, or Tiny Titans rather, proved to be one of the most popular free comic book day books I'd say last year. So you get another Tiny Titans story, also a Batman Brave and the Bold and a Magic of Shazam story. And interesting stuff all, uh, DC delivers on the kids stuff. It's, it's great stuff, even for adults, it, it kind of has a little wink and a nod to adults and kind of says, okay, you know, look, this is what's going on. We're not just going to talk down to the kids. We're going to kind of entertain everybody else as well. Do not miss from Mirage Studios uh, the 25th anniversary reprint of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one because 25 years later, this book holds up as a really good book. Not just a kid's book, but dark and indie and very interesting. And yes, it's sort of a parody on the whole idea of mutants and ninjas you know, that had been going around in uh, the mid-'80s. But it's excellent. It's, it still holds up to the test of time as a very serious book, a very interesting story to be told. There's not a lot of pizza eating and there's not a lot of cowabunga. So really good stuff. And the 25th anniversary obviously coming up. So the Ninja Turtles paraphernalia is just going to flood the market. But this is one of the good things. It's free. And again, it's a reprint of a book that now costs way too much money to possibly track down. So... I think it's the first time in a while that I've seen the actual, you know, even in trade form, seen it available. But it, again, it's a great story, holds up to the test of time, so check it out. Bongo Comics uh, delivers year after year because, let's face it, their writers still can deliver pointed social commentary and hilarious comic book jokes because they know comic books. They're comic book nerds like us. So there's some really fun comic book stories in here and Simpsons stories, and I still laugh at things that for all of the Simpsons mythology for so many years, you can still have a little comic book where the Simpsons are in their basement and the Olmec head is still in the back, you know, from like season three or whatever it was, you know, back when I was in high school, I remember watching that episode going, man, that's so funny because uh, Mr. Burns gets him the Olmec head for the blood transfusion from Bart as, the, as, a, as a thank you gift and something ridiculous and extravagant. It's still in the back of a comic, you know, 15 years later, 17 years later. Uh, whatever it is, you know, I've completely lost track of time on, <laughs> on when that it, when that episode aired versus modern time. I don't even know what year it is right now. But anyway, still, Bongo Comics Free For All, great stuff again for kids and adults. You know I love myself, the Atomic Robo. You got to pick up an Atomic Robo story. It's a hilarious Atomic Robo versus a Velociraptor dinosaur. Um, just ridiculous, couple pages, 
but it totally sets the tone for Atomic Robo. Why Atomic Robo hates Dr. Dinosaur, it's an excellent story, it's very funny. It, if you like this, obviously go buy Atomic Robo. Uh, volume 3 starts really soon. Uh, we're going to have a review of it coming up here because I've seen Volume 3 number 1 in the Advanced Preview copies and dang bueno, it's going to be really good as the first two were. Uh, I don't think Miracle Press really gets enough attention. I'm pretty sure they don't. Uh, this is Love and Capes, issue number 10, issued for free. Excellent stuff. You know, it's a fun sophisticated relationship story uh but it doesn't you know it it can be adult and it can be sophisticated without being adult you know and, and without getting into okay here are two characters they're going to get married one of them's a superhero so the other one becomes a superhero let's talk about some hilarious you know adult wink wink nudge nudge uh risque humor there's none of that there but it's just really fun it doesn't talk down to its audience so it delivers on on relationship foibles for adults but at the same time it delivers with kids kind of going well you know how hard would it really be to be a superhero it's cute it has a lot of heart and i think it's probably going to be missed by a lot of stores so definitely check this out if you can get it love and capes top cow delivers cyber force hunter killer um the first look for the crossover that's coming up and I don't normally follow artists, but Ken Rokafor is an artist I will follow to a lot of projects. It's excellent. It's a good primer on the Hunter Killer program. It talks a little bit about the Cyber Force program, and it definitely sets up what's going to happen this summer. Whether you're going to read it or not, this by itself is an interesting springboard. It's a very good story for free as well. Radical Comics, I love this company, but there's really nothing here. I mean, there's just a lot of pictures and not a lot of words it's just you know this book is coming out soon here's some pictures from it no no lettering no actual dialogue or or comic story in here per se but some great art you know this is the book that you'd want to take apart and paste on your walls if you're a kid it's going to be really good radical always puts out some great stuff it's kind of disappointing they didn't give a sample of their great stuff here but it's it's very much a catalog of what's coming out in the future which is very nice there's a lot of stuff coming out Oh, I don't even know what company put this out. Ad House Books puts out FCHS with also a little clip of a book called Remake. And both are very interesting stories. FCHS is a high school story. Remake is a little less high school, sort of an American manga. And they're both really fun reads. Uh, this isn't something really just directly for the kids. It has a little more of an adult flavor for it. But still very interesting. Um, could be good. And probably, again, will fly under the radar in the indie book pile. Not going to talk about that one because that one's sad. That one's sad. Um, lastly, Savage Dragon 148. Not too bad. Uh, I know Eric Larson can get a bit heavy-handed with the uh, gratuitous Obama appearances. He's decided not to throw Obama in the free comic book day. Thank goodness. Um, you get Savage Dragon and you get Daredevil, who is, of course, a Dynamite Comics character right now. But he's in the public domain, so Larson decides to use him. It's a fun, classic Savage Dragon story. If you read Savage Dragon 15 years ago, however many years ago, again, I don't know what year it is. I'm completely lost. If you read Savage Dragon whenever Savage Dragon started, like I did, uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised to find out you go back to issue 148 and everything's still the same. Uh, it's still Savage Dragon. It's still crazy. He's got a huge storyline, story arc behind him. But they do a really good job of introducing it. And then at the back, you get a very good uh, two-page uh, essay about daredevil which i believe is written by eric larson it just doesn't say who's written who it's written by i'm assuming it's by eric larson because he does everything on the book but excellent two-page uh story talking about the character the history of the character and why he's in the public domain and, and what people are doing with him now and why he's an interesting character so good stuff again another one that you'll you wouldn't necessarily think would be good but don't pass it over if you're looking for some of the G.I. Joe stuff, I don't have one in my hands right now, but IDW's G.I. Joe is a flip book with Transformers animated, so don't miss it if, if your comic store has the Transformers animated side up, but there's good glimpses of the G.I. Joe stories from IDW that we've been reviewing pretty positively as well. I think that's it for this installment. Uh, keep an eye out to our uh, YouTube account. We're going to be uploading a lot of videos from throughout the weekend, uh, funny little things that might happen over the course of Free Comic Book Day weekend. As I mentioned before, it's it's a huge event here at Grandland. We do a lot of fun stuff. We stay open for two and a half days straight, uh, noon on Friday to midnight on Sunday. So as you watch this, we're already open and we're not closing until Sunday at midnight. It's going to be a great, great time. We, you know, we got a lot of fun, a lot of different tournaments going on with the computers and the video games and the card games and the board games and all the stuff the kids do these days. <laughs> but it's, 
it's definitely a fun time, like I said, and I'm gonna try to shoot some funny uh, video blog footage to share with you guys, or some interesting footage of the comic store as well. So again, thanks for watching, and enjoy your free comic book day.